sounds like it's going to be wet <laughs> and cold, but such is life. Uh, and possibly quite unique, uh, considering what's planned. We are somewhere in the north of England. I'm not entirely sure where. Um, and we're shooting a video for Your Broken Shore, which is off our new album, which has taken forever to record, but it's done now, and uh, things are looking good. This is actually the first time the band has completely been in the same room doing something band related since this album started. I just wanted a black and white video, predominantly slow motion, um, of the band performing in a nice, well-lit building uh, and looking sincere about what we were doing. To be shooting a metal video in a church is, is Pretty, you know, don't have to be, don't often get a chance to do things like that, you know. The Wall of Marshalls is, that's one off the bucket list now, which I'm sure Andrew will say the same. Two walls. Can you say something? <laughs> he, um, yeah, he, he was very adamant he was going to have that, and there it is, so. <laughs> they look great. I had no idea that we were having those, actually. Um, I misread the email. I thought it said, um, four cabs, but it was like 24. Uh, <laughs> so, so yeah, I was like, I turned up and I was like, whoa. Um, but it looks, it looks great. It looks really, really good. I just ordered uh, from, a, from a, a company called Elite Logistics. So we work with uh, Martin Lamb's company, brilliant guy. Uh, and I said, I need, I need 24 marshals, dummy marshals. And he went, just say, no problem. You know, it's, uh, and just, we organized it and we stacked them up and obviously they look amazing. But the actual idea I stole uh, from a picture, which I love, I, I have it on my PC at work, of Jeff Hanneman, uh, stood in fact exactly that amount of cabs. This is how it's done. <laughs> this is how it's done. So, uh, so, um... Yesterday was the easy day because um, that part of the video was shot in a nice warm building with facilities um, so we could eat and keep clean, dry, and warm and it was quite enjoyable actually lots of room for everyone to spread out it was it was absolutely fine this isn't just any pizza this is my dying bride pizza aaron's catering piss poor fairly piss poor to, to rubbish yeah it's uh, all the food's been cold even the stuff that he warmed up <laughs> uh, yeah yeah there's, there's, there's room for improvement there could be more biscuits <laughs> he's a better singer than he is cook. <laughs> yeah. His grapes taste like olives. <laughs> or am I just in the wrong dish? <laughs> Yesterday the challenge was sort of positioning everything in the way it looked cool. We had me and the director James, we'd only seen the location on photos and seen it in the flesh. We realised there was actually more room to play with and there was a little bit more freedom to do, try different things and see what we came up with. So we've been shooting on the Alexa Mini this weekend, which is a fantastic camera. So many major feature films are shot on it. Um, and coupled with the Sigma Cine Primes, it's given us a really nice image. Uh, shooting in black and white, it's been difficult, but the camera's been really helpful. We've actually recorded in colour, but we created a, a sort of look, a nice black and white look that we could look at while we were shooting. Um, to give us a frame of reference, but we've actually recorded in colour and we'll, we'll tweak the grade in the post. The idea to bring cello in was, it was sort of there from the very beginning actually, but it was meant for intros, because I, when I was writing the album, I actually on a keyboard wrote a cello intro uh, to a, a song that became the Long Black Land, I think it's called now, uh, and it had a cello intro, it was quite well done considering it was electronic, but we said, oh fuck it, we'll, we'll get a real cellist and we'll find someone, uh, and Mark knew uh, Joe through uh, Winterfell, uh, we know those guys quite well, so uh, she was more than willing to come up and, and did sterling work on the on the album, it's just phenomenal, it, it's a shame we can't use more of it to be fair, but it just takes, <laughs> it steals all the thunder from everything else, uh, it really is unique stuff and just phenomenally grim and, and just suits it perfectly. She came up to the studio and she was lovely and she was super professional and she was there for a full day and she did everything and more that we required of her. And when you hear a cello, 
particularly an acoustic cello being played 10 feet away, when there's no other noise, just that cello, it sings and it sings beautifully, particularly when she's playing it. And you can see how passionate she is when she plays it as well. Her eyes are closed and she's got movement in her body as she flows with the, um, with the notes. And it's mesmerizing to watch and it's gorgeous to listen to. It's a very controlled environment when it's recording, and especially because I was recording with my with this cello, my acoustic cello. So it has to be in in basically a vocal booth. So uh, you know you have talk back on on the headphones, but you have got two doors between you and your producer and and your your artist, you know, Aaron in this case. So uh, it, now today has been great because actually what one of the things I enjoy most is performing with other musicians, you know, uh, and this has been great because we've been able to do that today and I've been able to find that I can connect with, with all of them and uh, it just makes much more of a, 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 a whole, you understand what you're doing very much more in that way when you can read people's body language, you know, and uh, everybody's moving together, it's very, very good. It's been very easy to, to if you like, find each other and to, to, to work and to play with each other. Um, we've always had a lot of um, orchestral layers, you know, whether um, it just be for CD um, or through samples. We've always had that anyway, so it doesn't feel so alien. Um, and of course, we've got the string elements with Sean, so it, it doesn't feel particularly strange. If anything, it feels like a, uh, something really special to have Joe with us. Um, to be able to kind of see it all come together live and it not just be like a, a sample or something, you know. I think she fit in great. I think she felt at ease. I think it looked great. And I hope she enjoyed it as much as we did. When you're performing live, you've got the energy of a crowd. It's all out there loud. When you're doing a video, it's roll it, roll it, roll it. Totally different experience. It feels a lot more sterile, you know, because you don't have the build up to, to do in a concert. You know, um, because you've got like maybe a hand, small handful of people kind of just circling around you and that wasn't quite right to do it again. Obviously you can't do that live. It'd be good if you could, but you can't, so. It does feel weird because you don't have the power behind you. You know, you don't have the, have, have the proper rumbles and all the, you know, and all the usual live noises. It does feel a bit strange, almost a little bit forced, but you're kind of thinking about what you're doing and, you don't really have that when you're live because you just do it, you know, without without a thought. But when you're conscious that you're being filmed, then it does feel a lot different. A few, a few plays and then, you know, you, you're into it, you're like, oh, okay, yeah, this is what I'm doing. Because of course, they don't come up very often in the video shoot. You do a, a lot more concerts than you do videos. So every time it feels a little bit weird and it just takes a bit of time to settle into it. I think it is difficult because because you're not actually playing the notes. It's You tend to overthink it. Uh, well, I do personally, and um, you, you, you're thinking, "Oh, am I playing that right?" And because you're not, you can't actually hear you, the thing you're actually playing. It's difficult, you know. So you're hoping you're not messing it up, but you know. But that's fine. It's what you're signing up for. It's all good. We're having a good laugh. I'm enjoying it. Yeah, the British drum company is um, a company from my hometown, um, and it, I just had. Uh, I just they kept coming up in my Facebook feed the the A and R guy and we got to talking and um, we're just you know investigating whether they're incredible sounding drums um, and we're just talking about being involved and what I can do for them. It's really again I'm very I love being part of the Manchester thing and you know to be able to be with such a great brand they're, they're probably the best sounding drums I've ever heard. The Merlin it's um, it's the only drum that's replace the Yamaha 9000 I bought for 60 quid in 1990, <laughs> second hand, which has been incredible. I've been looking for something to, to kind of replace it in the Merlin. It is a very versatile drum, the way it's made. It's almost like a metal snare, but made of wood. So yeah, we're in conversation and it was great. They lent me a kit yesterday for the shoot, looks great. And uh, we'll see where we go. Very much so. Oh, okay. <laughs> we looked at it Saturday morning. So, oh, I'm surprised it's, it's well down. Yeah. We're fine, but uh, sent him a photograph and emailed him a photograph. Yeah. And then he came to look this morning. It's probably 18 inches higher than it was yesterday. Now, which cover on those stepping stones is it now? It's too much about that. Just be swept away. 
it's going to be interesting. We are outdoors filming scenes of doom, death and destruction and danger. <laughs> Dark, wet, cold, <laughs> twigs. It's going to be cold and wet and um, we'll be all be out of our comfort zones, but um, yeah, we'll see what happens. I'm looking forward to it, actually. Uh, to be honest, I've spent most of my day trying to avoid wildlife. What's, what's happened? <laughs> We're just in the middle of like greenery and trees. It's like, I'm, I'm a city boy. I don't know what I do. <laughs> freaked out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's fucking, just off to a great start. Isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I, oddly enough, I've got a really good feeling about this. Uh, it, it's well planned. There's an element of danger because of the sort of props we've got, which include masks made of twigs of all things with highly flammable glue holding them together. And then we have torches with real life flame at the end. Uh, and then, you know, all these highly flammable uh, acrylic monk outfits to, to give this element of the, the demonic side of Aaron's persona in, this, uh, in the Broken Shore song. Uh, and as you said, it's quite light here in this, in this tunnel, where outside it is black, pitch black. So it, it, what, what can go wrong? <laughs> I mean, what can go wrong? How long have you got? Who can say? I mean, you know, I've not wandered around a forest with a twig mask, with a burning torch, you know, I, who knows? None of us know how it's going to go. We can't, you know, can't speculate how that's going to end up. Tonight's going to be a lot different. It's starting to drop quite cold now. Um, but we've got flaming torches later on, which is always a, it's always a rock and roll bonus. Um, except for me, unfortunately, I'm not getting involved in the flaming torches, but I am getting in the river. So, um, like it wasn't cold enough. Um, it's going to get a lot colder later on for me, but uh, that's my art form, you see. It's a perfect location. We've been filming some with flaming torches and by water, uh, which, which all sounds fantastic, but the heavens opened and uh, the rain has been against us today. So we're going to be out here under the moonlight um, and potential hypothermia, um, which, which I didn't really sign up for, but I'm going for it anyway. I don't mind, honestly, I don't mind because um, I quite like the idea of making films. I think if, if I wasn't in the band, and I've said this before, if I wasn't in My Dying Bride, I'd look maybe for some sort of outlet in the movie industry, I think. Um, so I can see what the director wants. And I'm all on board with it, absolutely all on board with it. Um, and the water's quite high now because it's been raining all night, but it, it doesn't deter me. Um, I'm just going to, it's going to be the last shoot of the night. So I'm just going to get in there, do the thing. And uh, I'm, I'm sure it'll be great. Um, uh, I'll have um, <laughs> some prosthetics on and some other weird and wonderful stuff going on, but I'm sure it'll be great. Uh, and yeah, I'm kind of looking forward to it. James Sharrock did Feel the Misery video, which it was great. Um, actually, the warning signs really were there because he had me in the sea doing that last video. So really, I should have known that he was never gonna settle for a video shot in a building in black and white in slow motion. I should have known he was gonna have me doing weird and wonderful things. Um, perhaps the back of, in the back of my mind, I realized we're gonna be doing nutty stuff. Uh, and James, James has kept in touch uh, and I think the Field of Misery video was probably five years ago or something like that, four or five. And James kept in touch all the way through. And so when we decided, okay, we will shoot a video, I emailed James immediately um, and he expressed an interest straight away. And here we are now. When you talk about the music industry and how people don't buy records anymore, the YouTube generation, I think if you don't do it, I think, um, I think you have to do it because people are just as likely to put something on YouTube as it would be to play an MP3 or whatever it is that they're doing now. I mean, I'll quite happily watch hours and hours and hours of music videos at home. A lot of the, you know, your stock metal videos is, you know, standing around in a graveyard and things like that. I like them when there's um, a bit of a theme and a lot of thoughts gone into them, you know, because um, like, like our video, it's, 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 it's shaping up like it's going to be pretty epic. So 
I think you've got a moment to catch someone's attention. I think apart from the diehard fans, if you're trying to um, bring on a new fan base, I think it's got to be eye-catching. And uh, I think it's like like when recording went from massive studios to people's bedrooms. I think everyone can record now. Everyone's got DV cameras, GoPros. So people can record stuff. So the, the fact that we've, there's a budget and planning to make it interesting, it'll give you a fighting chance. I kind of delve into a darker place which I don't normally dwell in during the day-to-day -day business of running your life. And when you go to that place, you, you just see things differently. You see almost a dreamscape becoming reality and you write about what you see, or well, certainly I do. Um, and it's not like I'm off my head on drugs or anything. I mean, I, I do like a glass of wine or two. And that just helps to, you know, relax you when it comes to the writing process. And I think also you're less critical when you're a little bit more um, tipsy. Um, and it, you just write because you feel like writing and it feels good. And you don't have to go back and correct every line and say, I'm not sure that works. You just go with the flow. And that's what I've done for your broken shore. Um, there's sort of a narrative in there which people... Will, will pick out as the director's done for this video. Um, and fans will pick out their own stories. So I, it's not normally till a few years after an album's been released that I give people my idea of what I thought the song was about. And in that interim, you get loads of ideas from all the fans from all over the world saying, oh, I thought the video was about this and this is my interpretation and I thought it meant this and it spoke to me in a different way. And I think that's absolutely wonderful. I think it's great like that. Um, but as I say, I've written songs that are very easy to understand. This one's a bit less easy to understand. It's a bit cryptic in places. That's just the way it is. It's all about... It's, I'm, I'm not going to say too much because I, I kind of let the fans watch it and they can guess uh, and figure out. But it's all a, a bit sort of a, a, a dualistic mind, really. It's a rush. Mad rush to get everything done. Rain slows you down. I think we've got everything. Are you all right now? How do you feel? All right. <laughs> well, better. Um, but uh, well, the proof will be in the pudding, won't it? If the video looks great, it will be worth it. If it doesn't quite look great, then I'm never doing it ever again. W will you be in a dry suit anytime soon for your own enjoyment? Dry suit, my ass. <laughs> I've only been in the water 10 seconds and I was soaking wet. They're not dry suits, they're wet suits. Uh, no, it was, it was all right, it was interesting. Um, but what would be even more interesting is my journey home looking like this. But uh, it's through Hebden Bridge, so I'll probably get away with looking normal. Just want to go home and order a takeaway. <laughs> We're in a very privileged position to be making a music video, and if that's what it takes, never forget that.